This is Coach J with FGC Simplify. Listen, I have put together some of my examples that I've given on live replay right here for you to check out. Um, if you need more information on how you can join the community or come to our free webinar, just look at the description of this video. You will find a link to our webinar on also a link to actually join the FGC community. If you want to learn more about how to get into federal government contracting as the middle person and make six to seven figures from home without doing the physical work. So enjoy these replay. And if you want to learn more, tap in with us at FGC Simplify. Let's go. Simple it is to get started in federal government contracting. That's it. All right. All right. So let me show you. Let me show you. Let me explain so I could do a, a little bit of teaching a little bit and then we get in. All right. So on this contract opportunity, they give you right here. They give you right here a brief description of what the federal government is looking for. Can you explain what without doing the physical work means? Yes. I'm glad you asked. I'm about to show you right now. Listen, all I ask you all to stick with me, participate with me. I'm about to show you how I can show you how we do this, how people in the community, the FGC community is doing this on a daily basis, making multiple six figures without doing the physical work, without doing the physical work. Okay. All right. So let me, let me, let me walk it out for me. Let me see who do that. Let me, let me pull the room. Let me pull the room. Do y'all want me to show you a high level overview of how people inside our community are doing this working federal government contracting making multiple six figures from work from home sorry without doing the physical work if you want me to show you if you want me to give you a high level overview of what we do in our community drop a heart emoji in the chat for me drop a heart emoji in the chat for me and i that's a heart emoji tap the screen for me send it out again everything i do here on tiktok is for free my goal is to bring the information. All I ask in return is just participation and cooperation. That's it. All right. I'm seeing some heart emojis coming up. I'm seeing the heart emojis. All right. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. Let me see. Perfect. 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 Wow, man. Y'all, y'all cooking with me today. All right. So let me show you. Let me show you. I'm walking you through. So this is the participation part. I'm going to walk you all through it. Again, at the end, I will I will answer all questions about the process. So it's hard for me to look at the screen and answer questions while I'm doing the example. So I'm just asking that all those that are in here right now, if you have questions, just hold it to the end and then I will come back on and out. Once I, once I get done with the example, I will answer all questions pertaining to it, okay? That's cool. Cool. All right. So, um, somebody drop in here. Somebody. Okay. Just answer the question. All right. Cool. 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 Let me go with it. All right. So the cost to get started in federal government contracting is what it will cost you in your state in order for you to get started in federal government contracting. All right. All right. Um, let me see. So, I'm, I'm walking you through the aspect of if you are coming across my content for the very first time, you're new to federal government contracting, you don't already have a small business, but you decide to get started, okay? So again, just insert yourself in the process. So um, let's say I'm going to use somebody in the chat for a, let me use, boom, Manuel. I'm going to use you, Manuel. Cool. Manuel found my content. He said, okay, Manuel lives in Ohio. He lives in Ohio. He doesn't know anything about federal government contracting, doesn't know, so he wants to get started. So he went to Inkfile, like I said. Again, all this process is linked in the bio. He clicked on Ohio, and he started his business for $99. It was a one-time payment, one-time payment, of the state filing fee in the state of Ohio to get his business registered and filed in the state, okay? He named his business Manual Management LLC, just to keep it simple. He went over to the IRS website and got his free EIN number, 
free EIN. And after that, he took his EIN number and his, his articles of incorporation and got his business registered in, in SAM.gov for free. It is free right here. He got his free UEI number and got his free cage code registered in the federal government system of SAM.gov. Okay? So he got started in federal government contracting business for $99 in the state of Ohio. Y'all drop in the chat for me. $99. $99 what is, was his startup cost to get started in federal government contracting. If you understand that, drop $99 in the chat for me. Cool. All right. I see y'all. Y'all cooking with me. Cool. All right. Emmanuel LLC out of Ohio also followed my process. He showed that he came to Sam.gov. He went to search. He went to contract opportunities. He scrolled down and he clicked on inactive and he found a list of contract opportunities. Thank you so much for the gift of contract opportunities that the federal government is looking for. He is looking for, he, look, he saw his fang aircraft fan. He saw script robotics. He's looking at all of this information and he came across housekeeping equipment service and maintenance. That's interesting. Emmanuel says, <laughs> yeah, that's my storytelling voice. All right. I'm fooling with y'all. So he's decided that he's going to work this contract opportunity. He noticed that it's active and he knows that there's money assigned to it. And again, this is free to find this contract opportunity. On every contract opportunity, there are documents that are assigned to the actual file. As you can see, there are documents that is attached to the file that will give you all the information you need in order for you to provide this federal government contracting service. So for this housekeeping maintenance service, the federal government will attach all the information you need, the type of equipment, how frequently they want it, how often they want it, all the information the federal government will give on this information right here. All these documents. If you understand, if you understand that the federal government will attach in these documents right here, all the information you need, the color, the size, the shape, the frequency, however often will give you in these documents right here, the federal government will give that information to you Give me a thumbs up in the chat for me that you understand that the federal government will provide you all the information you need. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much. Remember to follow me that I can always send you that link so you can book that free 30 minute with me. Okay. Thank you. All right. I see the thumbs up. I see the thumbs up. Remember, Emmanuel LLC is out of Ohio. So let's take a look at one of these documents. Okay. In these documents, it will give us everything the federal government is looking for. All right. All right. So they're looking for right here. The federal government is looking for housekeeping equipment and preventive maintenance. All right. Housekeeping and preventive maintenance. They will go through and give you, oh my goodness. All right. Take a look here in this document. And this is the case for most for most federal government contracting service-based contracts. As we can see that this contract opportunity is for one base year plus one, two, three, four, five, a total of five years. This one contract opportunity is for a total of five years just for this one service. If you can see, and, and again, I'm just opening the documents that's attached to what the federal government is looking for. If you understand that this one contract is for the next five years, drop a five in the chat for me. Drop a five in the chat. So I know that y'all are still rocking with me. All right, I see it. So again, so the federal government is looking for preventive maintenance 
for the equipment of housekeeping equipment. As we can see, we know that it's for the maintenance. And again, they give you a list of all the equipment. They let you know the hours that you can work. They give you all the information and it's for the next five years. What is the catch? There is no catch. Why do we, why do we do this? It's not a catch. The federal government, the federal government has a need that they are trying to fulfill. There is no catch. The federal government has to provide, has to acquire a small business like you and I in order to provide housekeeping equipment maintenance. They cannot, the federal government cannot go to Jiffy Lube or whoever provides that maintenance on equipment services and actually book. They have to actually put it out to for small businesses like you and I an opportunity to actually provide what the federal government is needing. The federal government has $6 trillion they spend. Last year alone, the budget is going to go up every year on small businesses. So there is no catch. We always we have to get out this mindset that when it comes to doing business that there is a catch. All right? All right. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So now that we have all the information that the federal government is looking for, we have the we have the type, the call. Again, on this information, on the documents that's attached, remember that I said they would attach all the information. I see right here an equipment list so now they will give us the equipment list. So let's open this one right here. Boom. Look at this. They gave us the equipment list. They gave us the type of equipment it is, the serial number, the model number, and how many. All of that. I mean, it's a vacuum system. They gave you all the information you need when it comes to this equipment that they're looking to be serviced and maintenance on. Okay. Remember, I say this all the time. The federal government does not dance in the gray area. The federal government will provide you clarity, all the information you need in order for you to provide to them what they're actually looking for. Whatever product or service it is, they would give you all the information. And on top of that, the federal government will provide to you a, fer a primary point of contact. This person right here, job and goal it is to give you all the clarity you need if you have a question about this document. Let's say you want to know, hey, how often do you want me to come out and service this actual equipment? If it's not in the documentation, they would be able to provide that information for you. That's their goal. That's their mission right here. All right. So that's the information. All right. So let we got the information. So Marie's was it? Marie out of Ohio has the information all what the federal government is looking for. He lives in Ohio, okay? As we can see that this actual contract opportunity is for California. They're looking for it in Willow Road, Mellow Park, California. It's actually for the VA Impalto Alto Care System. So he lives in Ohio. This contract opportunity is for California. So we have an address. We have an address and we have also a actual address on where the federal government is looking for this actual service. So now that we have found all the information that the federal government is wanting, we will simply go to my rich uncle called Google. Boom. My rich uncle called Google. Okay. And all we will simply type in is equipment. Let's say equipment service. In California. Boom. And now we would get a listing of small businesses in that area that does that does equipment service maintenance on on evac um housekeeping equipment again we can fo so follow this down yes again i will answer all questions here in a minute okay so now remember we still live in ohio our business is registered in ohio 
the federal government needs this service inside of California that we know of, okay? They're looking for housekeeping maintenance equipment. Now, I would reach out to these small business and I would provide them all the information the federal government is looking for. I will request a quote saying, hey, I have all this information. Can you provide me a quote to do preventive maintenance on this equipment that the federal government has provided to me? All this equipment, can I provide a quote to provide this preventive maintenance system on this? Okay, so this small business, let's go SoCal Equipment Repair. Let's use them for example. Let's say they will give me a, a quote in order to repair this um, e housekeeping equipment. Let's say they're going to give me a quote for, um, I'm throwing a number out here. Let's say this long list. Let's say they're going to give me a quote for 12K, $12,000 a month to come out once a month and do preventive maintenance on all this equipment. Okay. If if you understand that I, we will get a quote from SoCal, a, a small business within the area where the federal government is looking for it, drop a 12K in the chat for me. Drop a 12K in the chat for me. <clears throat> drop a 12K in the chat for me. If you understand that we will get a quote from SoCal Equipment Repair to do the preventive maintenance on all these equipment that the federal government is asking for, drop a 12K. Cool. All right. So now we will do what we call market research. We will get a quote from multiple small businesses within that area. Once we get a quote from multiple small business, we will know where we can put our profit margin on this. So let's say, again, I'm using an example because I don't know exactly what this will cost to do this preventive maintenance. Let's say we, do, we get multiple quotes and we see that we can actually put a profit of $1,500, $1,500 a month that we can put a profit on top of the 12K that we've gotten from our small business. So our total quote to do this, this actual service that the federal government is looking for will be 13.5K. If you understand that our profit plus the quote from the subcontractor is 13.5K, drop the 13.5K in the chat for me. Drop the 13.5K, okay? Frank, hold, hold one second for me, Frank. I promise you I'll answer all your questions. I promise. Let me, I'm almost done with the example. I'm going to come back and answer all the questions. All right, 13.5K. Perfect, perfect. So now we go back to the federal government, all right? So the federal government is looking for housekeeping equipment maintenance. We would read these documents that's attached to the file and we will provide the federal government everything they're asking for. Again, we will provide all the information, including our price to do this maintenance service. And all we will do is send an email to actually here, okay? So, so far, so far that everybody's still rocking with me from the example, we started this business out of Ohio. The total cost to get started out of in this federal government contracting business was $99 out of pocket. It was free for us to find this actual contract opportunity. It was free for us to find local subcontractors in California where this work is to be done. It was free for them to actually send us a quote and we put our profit on top of it. It was also free for us to submit a bid by sending an email to this person right here and providing them all the information they're requesting. And we send the email to the federal government. The federal government accepts our quotation, we won the actual contract to provide housekeeping equipment maintenance on this federal government contract. The federal government has awarded Miguel LLC Management LLC out of Ohio this federal government contract 
We will then hire SoCal equipment to do the physical work, meaning that SoCal equipment repair will go out to the facility, go out to the, the VA and perform preventative maintenance on the equipment that they're asking for. All the equipment, they will go out and do preventive maintenance on all of these equipment. After the, the service is done, SoCal Equipment Repair will invoice us for $12,000 a month. $12,000 a month. We will invoice the federal government for thirteen point five dollars a month. The federal government will pay us and then we will pay our subcontractor and we will profit 15K a month for the next five years without doing the physical work. When I say physical work, we are not going out to the site actually doing any maintenance repair. So that's how we make multiple six figures from home without doing the physical work. And that was just 15K, I'm sorry, $1,500 a month just off of one contract. As we mentioned early on, if you all remember, there are 4.5 million contract opportunities that's available. And there is no limit on the amount of contracts you can hold. There is not no limit on the amount of contracts that you can actually go go after. All right. So, so now let me answer some of the questions. Let me answer some of your questions.